Hey folks, good morning. Tuesday morning, uh, June. We're in June now. Wow. Tuesday morning, June 2nd. Good to be with y'all. Hope you're having a good morning so far. Um, I need to adjust my schedule. Um, the little card that we have up there, kind of our logo. Uh, remember, we're transitioning uh, our online videos to every Tuesday and Thursday. All right. Uh, Monday we'll have something posted on Facebook, you know, uh, to, to read, think about, uh, something that's thought-provoking, um, uh, encouraging. Um, and then Tuesday uh, uh, we'll do our live at 8.30 in the morning and then 8.30 at night, hope, prayer, and blessing. Wednesdays we'll have our Zoom video um, for Bible study. I encourage encourage you to join that. If Even if, if you're having trouble and you don't know how to use Zoom, let me know. I'll walk you through it. Uh, it's not that hard to do, um, and I will show you some tips and tricks and how to use it effectively, and uh, it's really a great tool, and we can continue to get together. Um, and then again, Thursday, 8.30 and 8.30, morning and evening, devotional and hope, prayer, and blessing time. Uh, and then Fridays, I'm going to be, I'm going to start to get back to uh, doing some, some self and family care <laughs> and taking a day off. Um, and we're going to try to get that done. Actually, this Friday uh, will be a will be a good day. We're going to be celebrating 16 years of marriage this Friday, so uh, Angel and I are going to 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 have a little celebration. Um, but uh, it's good to be with you right now. It's good to see you. Um, I hope you are doing well. I hope you had a great night, a restful night. Uh, I want to encourage you, if you would, um, because we're only doing these at limited times now. I really want to encourage you to share the video uh, down if you're watching on your device like this down at the bottom part of your screen where it says share click that button you can follow the instructions share your video uh, that allows your friends who are not connected to the church uh, or myself allows your friends to join in with you watch with you and then you can even discuss about it later and it gives you an opportunity to be a witness into their lives uh, and to have a voice to speak into them. Um, I want to encourage you to invite others to come to church this Sunday. Uh, we had 75 come out last Sunday, and what a great day it was. Uh, and we're going to continue to get better as we figure all this stuff out. And, and uh, there was some awkwardness there, but we're going to overcome that. Uh, and we're going to once again learn to, we have to relearn how to worship together. Um, we've kind of got into uh, a routine of worshiping at home, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but now we have to relearn uh, in this new normal how we're going to worship together. And so I want to encourage you, uh, come back this Sunday. Um, and I, I, it might be uh, sensitive for some of you, but uh, we're going to be this Sunday talking about justice. And what the Bible speaks to us about justice, what Jesus speaks into us about justice, what the Old Testament prophets talked about. And, and you know what? It all lines up with God's plan. Um, I want to let you know uh, that yesterday um, I attended the, the peaceful march, the peaceful protest in downtown Kissimmee uh, and prayed for our police officers, for our leaders, for those in the community. Um, we join together as one people, not looking at color of skin or background or ethnicity or, or even religion and beliefs, but we join together as one people because that's the way God created us. Um, I want you to know that I'm still kind of putting my thoughts together uh, on how uh, I'm going to, to share kind of the, what I saw, what I heard. Um, there was also another element to that. Um, I took... Aaron and Aiden and Gavin, my 14-year-old, 13-year-old, and 9-year-old. Um, I felt it was safe, uh, and we positioned ourselves in places where if anything did happen to take place, they would be okay. Uh, so don't, don't be worried about that. Uh, your pastor's smarter than that. <laughs> but um, it's important that we, that we teach. Uh, it's important that we teach. Uh, we talked about history. We talked about why is this going on. We talked about the civil rights movement. We talked about equality. Uh, we talked about all these things. And uh, you may have seen Angela's recent post on Facebook, but Gavin, 
uh, as we were leaving, we're debriefing ourselves and talking about, okay, what did you hear? What did you see? How did you feel? What did you think inside? Uh, what did you like? What did you not like? You know, all this stuff. We're asking these questions as we're driving home. And Gavin mentioned the phrase, uh, he said, we need to look out for each other. Uh, and talking about all people. Uh, he didn't say white people or just black people or Hispanics or whatever. He said, we, as a people, we need to look out for each other. Uh, and watch out for each other. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, our kids know uh, and, and our young ones pick up. And if we don't teach them uh, that God created us as one people, uh, this battle that we've been fighting for centuries will continue to be fought. So come this Sunday, invite your friends. Some of you might think we shouldn't be talking about it in the church. Well, we absolutely should. Let me read you a portion uh, from our manual, from our Church of the Nazarene manual. And this is uh, our Nazarene statement on discrimination. The Church of the Nazarene reiterates its historic position of Christian compassion for people of all races. We believe that God is the creator of all people and that of one blood are all people created. We believe that each individual, regardless of race, color, gender, or creed, should have equality before law including the right to vote, equal access to educational opportunities, to all public facilities, and to the equal opportunity according to one's ability to earn a living free from any job or economic discrimination. We urge our churches everywhere to continue and strengthen programs of education to promote racial understanding and harmony. We also feel that the spiritual admonition of Hebrews 12:14 should guide the actions of our people. Let me read to you Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. We urge that each member of the Church of the Nazarene humbly examine his or her personal attitudes and actions towards others as a first step in achieving the goal of full participation by all in the life of the Church and the entire community. So, this is part of who we are. If we're going to call ourselves Nazarenes, really if we're going to call ourselves Christians, we need to understand that we are of one people of one blood, no matter our background, race, ethnicity, creed, no matter what. And so this Sunday we're going to be talking about what does the Bible say? What does God's word say about justice? And in talking about that, we're also going to discuss how do you shape your worldview? We have a great group of people that attend and come to church, uh, but there are many, many different opinions. That's one of the reasons why I don't talk about politics in the church, because there are so many different opinions, even in our small little circle. And that's a great thing. God's given us a great thing called diversity, and that's important to continue to have. And we're individuals. We think individually. But we need to learn to shape our worldview, not by what culture says, but by what the Word of God says. And so we're going to discuss that this Sunday as we look at His Word and what it says about justice and doing good. All right? So I encourage you, invite your friends, invite your family. Uh, it will be online. You can invite them to watch online. Uh, I'm looking forward to a great Sunday morning. And so I want you, uh, really, really want you to try uh, to participate in one way or the other, whether it's watching online or whether it's being there uh, in person. The doors will be open. We are going to welcome you. Uh, mask or no mask, there's a place for you. All right. So come be a part. We're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. Uh, but for today, we have a short little devotional that I want to walk us through. And this kind of uh, helps us as we think about some of these things, as we talk about, you know, some of these issues that are happening in our country that have been so deeply embedded, and not just in our country, but in our world. Uh, there's a sin problem in our world. Uh, and we need to find ways to prepare ourselves uh, to constantly battle that uh, and overcome all the junk that's taken place. Uh, you and I, we can never be the kind of people that God wants us to be on our own, by ourselves. Um, we're never intended to do life that way. When God created Adam, he saw that it was good, but he, needed, he wanted to create him a helper. He didn't want him to be alone. Uh, we need people. We are uh, 
we we're not loners. That's not how we were created. Um, and in fact, there are actually certain people that we need to surround us. We need people who are who are teaching us, who are sharing their lives with us, investing in us, encouraging us to grow. Uh, the Bible tells us, and here's our scripture for today. And I want you to uh, to hold on to this one. This is a great proverb. It says, "Walk with the wise." And become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. In fact, to be all that God calls you to be, you need to learn from at least four different kinds of people. And I want to talk about those four kinds of people just really quickly, and then we're going to wrap things up. You need these four people in your life, and I believe this to be true. You need mentors. You need to have a mentor in your life. They're they're your coaches. If we think about sports, we we think about, you know, you have a coach that teaches you, that helps you, that uh, that instructs you how to perform better. You need mentors in your life. No matter what age you are or how far along you are in your Christian walk and your journey, you need to have mentors. I want you to know that your pastor still has a mentor. Actually, he has a couple. (laughs) He has mentors. He has people that he goes to and he asks questions and he discusses and, he, and, and, and bounces ideas off of. One person will teach you in one area. Another person will teach you in another area. Uh, gather people around you who have strengths and qualities uh, that can help you grow. You need a mentor. You need multiple mentors. You need role models. You need role models in your life. These are people who are already doing or have done what you are trying to accomplish. I've got a number of not just mentors, but I have a number of role models as well. Um, Many of these uh, skills that we need to learn in our life to accomplish what God has called us to, we can learn those skills from others. So you need a role model. Uh, You need a partner. You need a partner. You need coworkers, colleagues that will, uh, who are in your same profession, in your same uh, walk, trying to accomplish the same things you are. People to support you and to challenge you, to spur you on and to drive you further into your goal. And then the last thing you need is you need friends. Now, friends don't necessarily help you with your goals. They're just friends. Everybody needs friends. They love you no matter what you do. If you succeed or if you fall, they love you and they're there to support you. You can mess up and they're still by your side. A friend walks alongside you when everyone else walks out. You need a friend. The world would be a much happier place if we surround ourselves with friends. Uh, trying to do life solo just just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's lonely. It's hard. And to be completely honest, it's against God's design for us. It's not the way we were designed to be. And so I want to encourage you, try to find, if you don't have it, try to find these four people in your life. Try to find a mentor or multiple mentors. Try to find a role model or multiple role models. Uh, Try to find partners, people that will, in the same line, that will challenge you, encourage you, uh, spur you on, help you set goals together. And then find friends. Surround yourself with people that are going to build you up and not tear you down. So this, this, is, this takes some soul searching. This takes some work. It's not an easy thing to do. But I believe if, if we were to work uh, and, and try to accomplish some goals like this, we would be more successful in all that we do. I'm not talking about successful as growing your bank account or having a bigger house or a better car. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being more successful in helping populate his kingdom. We need to be kingdom-minded. All right, guys. Well, know that uh, know that I love you. Know that I appreciate you. Uh, I was in the office yesterday. I'm getting ready to go back in this morning. Uh, and uh, great things are going on. I'm looking forward to more opportunities to spend time uh, worshiping, uh, working, uh, and doing the ministry of the church together inside and outside. All right, guys, love y'all. Appreciate you. Hope you're having a blessed day. And as he is blessing you, remember, hallelujah, say hi, good morning.
<laughs> as he is blessing you, make sure that you take the opportunity to bless others around you. Take care, guys. Love y'all.